Good morning and welcome to our Eucharist on this third Sunday of Epiphany. Sadly, we are still unable to be together in church, so I'm here celebrating in my own home this morning. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our prayers of penitence. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness from our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of the Revelation, and it is from chapter 19. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades, who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, and all flesh shall see the salvation of our God. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
reading from the second chapter. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you or to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What we miss most in lockdown, of course, is getting together with friends and family. There's something about sitting down together to a meal, isn't there? The food, the laughter, maybe a glass or two of something being with people with whom you share your story, people who know all about you, people who accept you just the way you are. These, I think, are the real pleasures of life, these simple moments with our nearest and dearest and with our closest friends. And pray God that soon we shall be able to join in those moments again. And pray God too that we shall soon be able again to come to our shared meal in church, our communion or our Eucharist, for that is where our Christian family meal is held, a meal with our friends in Christ and with our Lord. We share in his feast and we come with joy because we are invited and we know that we are really known and loved. We can come just as we are. And at this meal, we recognize and love each other too, as brothers and sisters in Christ, people with whom we share a story and a faith, people who are on the way to the kingdom of heaven with us. At the Lord's table, we have a foretaste, a glimpse of the glory of that wedding feast of the Lamb that we heard about in our reading just now from the book of Revelation. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb, writes John. And we are those invited ones, those blessed ones, those whose righteous deeds must shine brightly. Wedding feasts are really our theme this morning, aren't they? Our gospel reading tells of Jesus and his mother and his disciples at a wedding in Cana in Galilee, a joy joyful local community celebration helped on its way by an amazing miracle by our Lord, turning the water into wine gallons of wine. But John, writing his gospel, wants his readers to see beyond the miracle to the true identity of the miracle worker himself. 
the people of Israel would remember that often in the Old Testament Israel herself is seen as the bride or the wife of Yahweh, of God. And often indeed she is seen as a faithless wife or faithless bride. But the prophecies also foretold a final consummation between a renewed Israel and her God, a final time when that relationship would be perfected. And so here in this story of the wedding at Cana, John wants us to see Jesus as the bridegroom, the Son of God coming to claim his bride, the new Israel. And the excessive amount of wine reflects the excessive love of God that will be poured out in Jesus' life and death in order to cleanse and heal God's holy people and bring them into a new relationship with God. As in the book of Revelation, John sees here too a beginning of the fulfilment of that final marriage feast of the Lamb, the time when God and his people will be one. So as we ponder our scriptures today, let's give thanks that as Christians we are called and invited to share in this story of salvation and healing for all the world. And we pray that we may be able soon to gather around the Lord's table in our beloved church in Broomfield and share that feast with our Lord, sharing his spirit and his love. And meanwhile, we know that Christ is still with us, still present with us, his body, even though we may be separated from each other. And we remember that nothing in all creation can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So we come to the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come to our time of intercession. Let us pray. Lord, you transformed common water into wine. May our common lives share in you who are divine. As you, dear Lord, have taken on our humanity, may we now partake of your divinity. Lord, let your church reveal your glory in the world. And may we be like those saints in the book of Revelation, our righteous deeds shining for all the world to see.
Good Lord, transform us that we may reveal your glory. We pray for our world, for all those places where there is poverty or suffering or injustice or war. We pray for those countries where there are insufficient medical resources to cope with COVID-19, for people dying without any hope of medical help. We pray for our own country, for our government and parliament as they make difficult decisions about how long the lockdown should go on and how our economy can be supported. We pray for the United States of America and the new administration there. Good Lord, transform us that we may reveal your glory. We pray for our local community. We pray especially at this time for our hospital, Pray for its staff and patients, for all those in hospital suffering from COVID-19, for those in intensive care, those who will die today without family close to, to support them. We pray for Broomfield, for the people of Broomfield in this time of lockdown, Pray for children at home learning, for the elderly who are isolated and lonely. Pray for homes where there is tension and difficulty, praying that you will pour your loving spirit of peace upon those who are in anxiety today. Good Lord, transform us, that we may reveal your glory. We pray that your presence may transform our homes and that our homes may be centres of love, joy and peace. We pray for friends and loved ones and all who have transformed our lives by their goodness. We pray that in our communities we may share and help to meet each other's needs. And we pray for areas of darkness and deprivation in our communities. Good Lord, transform us that we may reveal your glory. We remember all who are in trouble or in sickness. We bring to the Lord anyone particularly on our hearts today, asking for healing in their lives. Good Lord, transform us that we may reveal your glory. We rejoice that in you the best is yet to come. We give thanks for all who have been changed into the glory of your kingdom. We pray that we may join that glorious band of saints in heaven with them. We pray for loved ones departed from our sight, especially today remembering Joyce and Eric. Good Lord, transform us that we may reveal your glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Word made flesh, light of the world. In your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your Spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the word, a new light has dawned upon the world that all the nations may be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. I receive this sacrament on behalf of all of you watching this this morning and for the people of St. Mary's Brookfield the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. My brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.